Okay, good morning. So looking here at two compilation albums that I own, and this is from a um, a specific compilation series that I think is of a higher quality than the average compilation. This one here, Late Night Tales Air, I got secondhand for five dollars, which I think is an absolute bargain. This one here is a new CD. I bought that new and that was $25, I think, new. But I, uh, including it here, but just kind of illustrate, um, illustrate uh, some more information about the series as, as opposed to just having one of them. So Late Night Tales is a, what do they call it? They call it a artist curated compilation album. And it's been going since I think the early 2000s. The first one was released 2001. So they get, they ask this, uh, I don't know, is it a record company? I'm not sure. However, um, so it's released by Azuli Records until 2009. Now late night, late, sorry, Nighttime Stories is releasing them as of 2009 up till now. They approach artists and ask them to compile a, um, a bunch of songs together and um, they also usually ask them to do what record one cover version of a song to include on the album now I don't know whether it's supposed to be albums that um, influence them or just songs that they like or the concept has never been uh, as far as I can see um, Kind of explained in, in in detail but um regardless it kind of um it's it's a i like the idea of kind of you know artists showing us a bunch of songs that they want us to hear and um yeah so the first one here i'll go through the, the ear one first so the way they present it most of them look the same like looking through even the more modern ones they have kind of a black background with some sort of central item. In this case, it's like a, a crystal chandelier or something like that. And then it's it's lit in some way, kind of, I guess, um, emphasizing the late night aspect. And it's in the white fight, late night tales, and then in a other font, different color, the artist, with a cardboard slipcase on the outside. Okay, there's the sticker. So I got this from the, um, the records, uh, it's not secondhand, they have a secondhand section. It's called uh, Flying Out. It's in Pitt Street in Auckland. It's quite a small place and they are, it's like 95% of the, uh, the shop is dedicated to vinyl. But they have a small CD section at the back with new CDs and they used to have a very small section of secondhand CDs. Last time I went there, about a month or two ago, they had no secondhand CDs which is a shame because they had some pretty good, I've got a, a few things from there and they're usually around that price of $5. And it would be things that you wouldn't find elsewhere. It would be quite a, an eclectic mix of stuff. So hopefully they, um, they get some more secondhand stock in. They also have sometimes new CDs, but at a really reduced price for five or $10. And again, for some really quite eclectic, different type stuff, I've got um, some really interesting CDs from there. Um, was it Leprosy or Leprous? Is that no Leprous? The band that um, is signed from El from Emperor when he uh, records solo albums. The band that backs him, I think it's called Leprosy. Anyway, I got one of their albums from there. Anyway, going a bit off track here. So we got the track list thing here, and it kind of gives a little bit of like a blurb um, explaining a bit about the band. And maybe yeah, it kind of just gives a bit of their history and about their music themselves. Doesn't really say um, anything about what they chose. Okay, so it says, Ears Most Treasured Records, latest uh, release minds, uh, Parisian, da, 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 inspiring near enough uni universal appeal, dipping into by turns melancholic, ambient, soulful, mellow, downright moody classics. Air selections make for timeless, lounge-loving, uplifting, and occasionally heart-wrenching stuff. Their selections propel you into a world as dry and satisfying as glass of Chateauneuf du 
Pape. Excuse my French pronunciation, which is non-existent. So it sounds like there that it's, yeah, just kind of selections trying to keep in with the theme of late night. So maybe kind of a little bit, um, like they say there, soulful, ambient, mellow, moody, and melancholic. Is that what we think of late night music when you're coming home after a, a big night out? I'm not sure. And there we have the disc. And there we have air. I've talked about air before. I, I reviewed um, Talkie Walkie. So the, the, the thing I like about this is that the, the tracks that the artists choose are very eclectic. So they actually give a little a, a, a description. And the two guys, Nicolas and was it Jean Benoit, gave an um, explanation as to why they chose the, each track. And there are some of the other ones. So yeah, just, uh, I haven't said that, but so I, I have here Aaron Roixop, but some of the other ones they have, um, they have a Cinematic Orchestra did one, Jamiroquai did one, Howie B did one. Um, just kind of some of the ones I recognize. Fatboy Slim, Groove Amada, Matt Helders from the Arctic Monkeys, MGMT, oh, that'd be an interesting one. Bell and Sebastian, Bonobo, Franz Ferdinand, John Hopkins. That would be a, a, an interesting one as well. Uh, bad, bad, not good. Hot Chip, Krungbin. Don Letts, the, uh, was it the DJ? He, he, he's done the most recent one. So the most recent one was released in um, 2021, September. So it's almost, you know, a year and a half they have um, since the last one. And that seems they put them out quite regularly. It's basically two a year. But they do have some gaps. 2016, they released three of them. Um, anyway. So back to what Air selected. So let's look at the, the track listing. So we have here, All Cats Are Grey by The Cure. Now, interesting they selected that song. But anyway, Par uh, Planet, Planet Caravan by Black Sabbath. I'm trying to look at the ones that I... Uh, uh, Ghosts by Japan. That's a good song. Number seven, The Old Man's Back Again by Scott Walker. That is an awesome song. It's got a really good bass line, starts off. I guess Scott Walker, uh, some people don't like his vocals. Some people absolutely love Scott Walker and kind of see him as one of the greatest, most unrecognized musical geniuses of the 20th century. I think he's got some really good stuff. Some of his stuff I'm not too uh, keen on, but he does have some good, good stuff. This is from his earlier work. I think this was 1968, The Old Man's Back Again. And if you listen to the lyrics, it's about... Um, the Russians invading what was Czechoslovakia, the Prague uprising, or was it the Prague uprising, the Prague Spring, whatever they refer to it, where the, the um, Warsaw Pact sent troops into um, to Czechoslovakia to put down any kind of democratic uh, uprising in the late 60s. He's singing about that, but it can... It's... Uh, it can be applied very directly to, to, I guess, from a Ukrainian's perspective of what what is happening in Ukraine now. Um, so yeah, I recommend that song. Listen to the lyrics. Uh, just the other songs. Do I look on this? Um, oh, the uh, the Lee Hazelwood one, track thirteen. My autumn's done come. Um, but in general, it's just yeah, a, a very good collection of songs, and it's introduces introduces you to things that you wouldn't really listen to usually. For example, Lee Hazelwood. Lee Hazelwood is not someone who I've ever really listened to. I think I maybe listened to one or two songs he did with Nancy Sinatra, but but that kind of um, opened me up to some of his music, and you know, I it, I went and listened to some of his other stuff. Um, same for. Um, for uh, what was the other one on here? I think it was the Trogs. No, it wasn't the Trogs, Cousin Jam. 
There's another song on here that I um that I really like, and then I went and looked kind of through some of the uh, discography. There's some of the French artists as well, Sebastian Tellier, I think Georges Delarue, Delarue. But my point is, is that it puts together a lot of kind of disparate music, but interesting stuff. And there's not, on all the things I've listened to these over the years, I've never come across a song and thought, oh, this is an awful song. It's always like, it's very well track listed. The songs that the artists put together, they it really works together well, flows together well. Let's look at one of these and we'll read about what they say. Um, We'll take Ghost by Japan, because that's a song I'd never heard before I listened to this. So, Nicolas from Air says, We only discovered this about one month ago. Nigel Godridge played it to us. It's cool that in this era you could have a hit with something like this. This era seems to have been a paradise for weird stuff, like the Mini Ripperton also. So, he's talking there about the band Japan and the song Ghosts. Uh, what year did that come out? I think that was about 1980. 81, okay, an important year for me. So he's right that if you look at the British charts in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, there was some very out, out there stuff on it. Of course, there was a lot of pop and, you know, typical stuff like, you know, that is always popular in, in Britain. But there's also a lot of stuff that, yeah, like that song, Ghost by Japan. I don't know what number that got to on the on the charts, but um, but it's quite a, a, a weird song to, to gain any kind of popularity. So, um, yeah, I, I agree with him in that one. And interesting that I only heard it a month before they decided to put on this compilation. Okay, the next one is the Royksop one. Like I said, this is new. This isn't secondhand, so you can see the condition of the CD uh, slipcase is a little bit better. And this time we are featuring as our central picture a glowing cat, like a cat lamp. Oops. So there they talk about some of this stuff. Brief introduction and talk about what they chose, maybe why uh, the kind of central idea of what they chose. The CD itself keeps a similar theme throughout the series, all black with just the, uh, the Midnight Tales uh, title and the artist title. Doesn't have a picture of Royx up like it did on the air one. So again, just goes through. Oh, there they are. Goes through um, the each track, and they talk a little bit about it. Let's look at their track listing. So they include a new track, Daddy's Groove, exclusive new track. What do they cover? They cover Depeche Mode, Wakesop Ice Machine, exclusive Depeche Mode cover version. So what else has got some good stuff on here? Little River Band, Light of the Day, Vangelis, The Blade Runner Blues, um, Prelude After the Gold Rush. So if you never heard Prelude before, they are like a a cappella female vocal group and they do Neil Young's After the Gold Rush completely a cappella. Royksop have mixed it. So the voices are, I've heard both the original and the, un, the original mix and the Royksop mix. The original mix is a bit more, um, dry whereas Royksop kind of make it more ethereal they put a bit more reverb into it and stuff but uh, either way it's it's pretty great um is a song this that my wife likes which one is it oh music fr david whenever i play that song in the car she always every single time she asks me who's this i like this song um a song I really like on this, and that introduced me to this artist, Thomas Dolby, track 12, Budapest, Budapest by Blunt. Now, I'd, I'd heard, was it Blinded Me with Science? Is that the, his, that was kind of his only hit, I guess, in the 80s. But he's actually got some interesting music. 
and he's an interesting guy. Got a bit of a, uh, I don't know how to describe him. Every interview I've read with him or seen a video interview is something of a genius to him. And I don't even necessarily mean musical genius. I feel like he's, his, his, his brain is on another level. The way he explains things is like, you know, you, you meet some people, you talk to some people and they feel, it feels like they're operating on a level above you. They can understand things that you can't understand. And they look at concepts and ideas in a, from a completely different point of view. So maybe it's not even that he's particularly smart or anything. It's just that he has a very different way of looking at things. He explains the meaning of that song Budap Budapest by Blimp. And he says it's um, it's about looking at the treasures of Europe. But he said he he wrote it from the point of view of someone of, of on a balcony giving a speech. I don't know. I just when he explained it, I just I thought to myself, who would ever even consider writing a song from this perspective? But anyway, then it kind of the last verse kind of talks about the dark side of how the treasures of Europe and, and uh, you know, the, what we see as, you know, European civilization, at least in the modern age, was built off the backs of, you know, col colonialism, basically, and, and the blood of, of those people. And um, anyway, I, I recommend, little, even forget about the lyrics, the, the song by itself is cool. It's an interesting song. Very different. It sounds 80s, but it doesn't also doesn't sound like anything else in the 80s, if you know what I mean. Populva, that last song, very a beautiful, ethereal, ambient song. This Mortal Core, XTC. Just, again, it's a, a collection of really interesting, disparate songs, but that go together so well and introduce you to a lot of interesting new artists that maybe you wouldn't have listened to before. I'm going to read the blurb of Put a piss by blimp just to see what they say about it. Where are we down here? Sven Berger says, This is a signature Dolby production, seasoned with 80s drama and danceability. It's pop to the left of center classic. That's a good way of saying it. Pop to the left of center. So I said it sounded like the 80s, but also didn't sound like anything else in the 80s. Approached in a very different way. So yeah, I guess w what I'm trying to say with this is that I talked about compilations in a previous video and I said, you know, the idea of a compilation is it's it's usually a very throwaway thing, isn't it? The kind of thing that you'd, you know, and there was a period in the uh, 2000s where you could find CDs in supermarkets or CDs in gas stations. They were targeted at kind of like housewives who weren't necessarily music fans, but wanted the next, you know, the the one CD that kind of put all the radio hits together for that year. That's often what compilations are like, aren't they? Some of the compilations I showed yesterday, you know, classic rock hits, rock that rocks, that kind of stuff. These compilations are much more, much more serious and curated affairs, have had a lot of thought put into them, draw from multiple genres across multiple decades, even across multiple centuries. Sometimes you've got classical songs for Britain, you know, hundreds of years ago, put together by artists that aren't necessarily huge, like Roy Sopper here, but also make a certain kind of music. And uh, yeah, have I explained it well enough there? Um, so yeah, very, very, very much recommend these. If you're into, into just kind of discovering new music and different kinds of music, I, I really, uh, really do recommend them. And I, um, I hope to buy some more. Like I said, I've downloaded a few of them, but I've, um, I only own two of them. I used to own the Bell and Sebastian one, but that one is genuinely lost. You know, sometimes I say lost, but it actually means stolen or, or sold. But that, I don't know what happened to it. It's just not around anymore, which is a shame. But um, yeah, 
So Late Night Tales compilation, artist curated, highly, highly recommended. Thanks for watching.